grow to serve and remember that you're um, there being, um, they're following your example. Thank you, Crystal. Can I please have the helping hands to the front? Do you guys want to grab, grab a mic? Grab a mic each. Because Jesus loves me, I can always do my best. Be obedient, be pure, be true, be kind, be respectful, be attentive, be helpful, be thoughtful, be lovable, be reverent. Church, how'd you go? How'd everybody go? Good? Okay. Do you want to stand for the next one? It is pretty good as well. It's pretty upbeat. Yeah? Okay. All right. So next song that we're doing is called I'm Trusting in You, Jesus. Thank you. 
Where's our duty elder? Sorry. He's sitting up inside. Sorry. Now it's time for our tithes and our offerings. Can I please get Kylie, those who have been appointed, to come forward and collect our offerings, please? Lord, we just want to thank you for the many uh, gifts and blessings that you give to us. And as we have returned some of that, we just want to pray that you will bless it to further your work. We pray in your name. Amen. All right, kids, I've got a children's story. So if there are any kids in the church, if you want to come, they're already at the front. If others want to join you, come on in and join us. to see you here today. I've been away for a couple of weeks, so it's so good to come back and be part here at Campbelltown Church. And today I get the opportunity to tell you a story. Do you guys like stories? Yeah, cool. I get to tell you a story story today because Pastor Terence is going to talk about follow my lead. Follow my need. And that reminds me of a story of something that happened in the jungle. What sort of animals live in a jungle? A lion. What sound does a lion make? What other animals live in the jungle? Elephant. What sound does an elephant make? (laughs) What other what other animals live in? A cheetah? Raw. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Yes. What animal lives in the jungle? Um, a monkey. What sound does a monkey make? Ooh, ooh, ooh. You guys are so good. So one day, all these animals were in the jungle, and all the animals liked each other in the jungle, when all of a sudden they heard a sound. And the sound went like this. ba. Uh, what, what was that? Sheep. A sheep. 
It was a little sheep. What's a little sheep called? A baby sheep. What's a baby sheep called? A lamb. Do lambs belong in the jungle? So in the jungle, they heard this ba, and it was a lamb. And all the other jungle animals looked at it and go, you don't really belong here. Lambs don't belong in the jungle. Lambs belong in the farm. So they weren't that nice to the lamb. They weren't that nice to the sheep. One day, Mr. Monkey was out looking for food. What type of food does monkeys like? Oh, he was out looking for bananas and he was climbing all sorts of trees and he was climbing up this really tall tree and he was going higher and higher and higher and higher and then he was looking for where's the best spot to find bananas? Where's the best spot? I'm looking for the best spot to find but <gasps> Off in the distance he saw something that made him really, really nervous. <gasps> he quickly climbed down the tree. He ran to all the other animals. And as he ran towards all the other animals, do you know what he said? Fire! <laughs> There's a fire! There's a fire! Quick, we got to go. We got to get away from the fire. So all the animals, they got up and they ran as fast as they could to try and get away from the fire. Then they ran. They came to a great big river. Oh, no. No, what are we going to do? There's a great big river. How are we going to escape the fire? Because the fire was getting closer and closer and closer. And then they heard a little voice. But... I know the way, follow me. And the jungle animal says, but you're only a lamb. You wouldn't know. No, we've got to get across this river before the fire gets us. What are we going to do? And then Mr. Turtle, he says, I know, we can all swim. Hooray for Mr. Turtle, we're saved, we're all going to swim. And so all the animals, they started into the river and they started swimming. Can you swim with us? They were swimming, and some animals swam really good, but other animals, they didn't swim too good at all. But you know what? The river was flowing too fast. The river was too wide. And so the river threw them back on the bank, and they didn't get across. And all the time, the fire's getting closer and closer and closer. Oh, no, what are we going to do? But I know the way, follow me. But you're only a lamb. You wouldn't know the way to go. I know, said Mr. Giraffe, we can run around the river. Hooray, we're going to be saved. Hooray for Mr. Giraffe. All right, everybody, let's pretend to run. Ready, set, go. Let's run around the river. Run, 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 run. And they ran and they ran and they ran. Stop. Some animals ran really well, other animals didn't run at all. But no matter what, the river was far too long and they couldn't go around the river. Oh no, we can't cross the river. We can't go around the river. What are we going to do? But I know the way, follow me. But you're only a lamb, you wouldn't know what to do. I know, said one other animal, let's build a boat, let's build a raft, hooray, we're going to be saved. And so they quickly built a raft and they got the raft there and wow, they did that really cool. And then all the other animals started to hop in the the raft, they all hopped on, they all hopped on and then they were nearly there and then Mr. Elephant went to hop on. That's not going to work. Oh no, what are we going to do? And then they heard a little voice. But I know the way, follow me. But you're only a little lamb. How would you know? And then Mr. Tiger says, I know. 
we could go up to a kai where it's fairly high. And if we all take a big run and a jump, maybe we could jump across the river. Okay. Ready? Okay. Let's go. And so all the animals backed up. And then they started to run. They run really, 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 really fast. They run really, really, really fast. And then they jumped. Jump. And they were flying through the air. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to. Ah! Splash. Oh, no. And the fire was getting closer and closer and closer. But I know the way. Follow me. And by this time, some of the animals says, you know what? I think we better follow the lamb. And so they followed the lamb and they went down and they went around a corner in the river. And there the lamb showed them something that they had never seen before. It was a bridge that went from one side to the other. But the bridge looked a little narrow. And someone says, I don't know. Can we cross this bridge? How can we cross it? How will we do it? And the lamb says, you will be able to follow it, across it, if you follow me. But how? But how? The lamb says, watch how I do it. Follow my footsteps. And did you know that all the animals who watched how the lamb did it, and all the animals who followed the, followed the lamb across the they were all the animals who were safe. Who do you think the lamb might represent in this story? Jesus, yeah. So as adventurers and as kids, let's remember to always keep our eyes on Jesus and follow the lamb wherever he goes. Thanks for listening. Thanks.
Heaven. The Lord in heaven glory brought. Mom, I it. As, we pray today. As we pray today. Watch our blessings from, from high. And bless us with your love. Guide us to do the things we should and always be to others kind and good. Care for those who are sick or poor. Watch over them all a little bit more. Look after our loved ones near and far and give us your rainbow of everlasting love. Bless Pastor Terence with your spirit. May Bless Pastor Terence. May our spirit fill this place, speak to him and make us one. As we go through this new week, Grant us your love and peace to endure. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayer today. May your love be our comfort and joy and peace always, we pray. Amen. Loving to be God. Good morning, church family. As you can see, it's not easy to look after so many little ones. It's a very hard job, and I thank my staff for the patience that they have to look after these little ones. Now, just a little bit on Adventure World history. In 1930, there were four, what we call at that time, pre JMV classes. Who was in pre jmvs Be honest. Put your hands up if you were. I was. Anybody else in pre jmv Do you remember what pre jmv is? At that time, we only had four classes. We had Busy Bee, Sunbeam Builder, and Helping Ant. And you couldn't start early. You had to be between six and nine years old to start an event. I mean, not even adventurous. It was pre jmv Now... I remember pre JV because I grew up in Ponsonby Church. And we had I did pre JVs right from the very beginning. If you look at badges that I have down the bottom here, these are kind of some of the original. I've actually lost a couple original uh, badges. But these were our badges at that time. And they're ones that don't last very long because they keep popping out and they don't stay on it very, very well. But I was proud that I was a pre JV. Then in uh, 1978, they changed pre-JMVs to adventurers, but the logo never changed until 1979, 1989, I should say. But the pledge and law is kind of similar to the original one for pre-JMVs. The song is certainly different because it was a different tune that we sang back in those days. Our workbooks are from the... Um, well, at that time, not even the youth department, they were called JMV, all right? So that was junior missionary volunteers. It was the Australian division that we got our workbooks from. Kind, at that time, kind of identical to what we used to do compared to what we do now. Now, over the years, we've had quite a few little hurdles, so to speak, because nobody knew what to do with adventurers. I know when we started in 1989 at the Cook Island Church, we didn't even have a uniform. So we kind of adopted the 
Pathfinder uniform at that stage, which is the green skirts and the white blouses. And it just didn't look right that we should be separate to, uh, to Pathfinders, but we kind of looked like we were all the same. So eventually they came up with the uniform, um, but again, the uniform has changed twice. And um, now we've come to these polo shirts. We've had little kittens, grasshoppers, which I have here. That was actually um, created by one of the uh, district directors in the Castle Hill Church. We've had um, playful puppies, to name a few. Today, we have little lambs. For Australia, called koalas. They were called early birds that we now have adopted called koalas. We have still busy bees, sunbeams, builders, and helping ants. And those unfortunate of our children who can't go up to adventures just yet, I mean, up to Pathfinders, because you have to be 10 to go to Pathfinders, they have created um, events helping ant. And our ages now are no longer six to nine. We actually take them now at four to nine. So it makes for a huge range of children within our adventure team. Um, here in Campbelltown, we currently have 37 registered adventurers. Broken down, we have seven little lambs, five cool koalas, five busy bees, three sunbeams, six builders, six helping hands, and two advanced helping hands. I am grateful and thankful for the commitment and dedication of our staff and administrative staff, working hand in hand together to look after, to ensure that our little ones are always taken care of. And I think really, when it comes to adventures, I think their best time is when they have snacks. Because <laughs> when they have snacks, they don't want to go back to class. But we have to provide them with something, and they love that time. They look forward to times like this where, you know, they can put their uniform on and show just how, you know, how proud they are of being an adventurer. Personally, I started as a pre-JMV in Ponsonby Church. So I've been in this ministry for many, many years. Our daughter is now, oh, she'll be 40 this year. We started... Her in 1989. And everybody says, this is impressive. This is years, years of adventure ministry. This is your evidence, parents. This is your evidence of what your children have done in adventurers. So when you get your, your um, awards, make sure you put them on there because I can tell you now, how many of the, are you, if you've got your sashes on, how many of you are proud to wear your sash? Put your hands up if you're proud to wear. See? They're all proud to wear their sashes because they achieve that. They achieve that. So on World Adventure Day, it's nice to be acknowledged. And this, after, this morning, I acknowledge our adventure staff. I acknowledge our church because of their prayers and their love and support as well. But I acknowledge our little adventurers because who do we shine for today? What did Pastor Travis say? Jesus. Jesus. That's who we're standing for and that's who we should shine for each and every day that we put Jesus first and foremost in our lives. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Man, it's so wonderful to be back here with my family, especially for Ad World Adventurers Day. Can we all just say a big amen for our Adventurers Club this morning? Amen. They did such an amazing job leading out. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite memories of the time that I was here. Well, actually, sorry, before I begin, some of you don't know me, uh, and that's okay. 
my name is Pastor Terence, and I was previously the pastor here uh, last year and the year before that. Um, and so it's, it's just wonderful to be back together with my Campbelltown Church family. Um, and one of my favorite memories of adventure is from the last few years that I was in here was every time you would have adventurers, um, I knew that, that Auntie Lena would come looking for me. And so what I would do is I would go and try and hide somewhere in the church uh, and see whether or not she could hunt me down. Uh, and she would, she would find me and she would say, Pastor Terrence, can you do the worship? And this was about two minutes before adventure started. And that was always my favorite to see Lord, please let me tell you kids a good story for Adventures Worship. But I love to see the way that you guys um, have grown. There's some new kids here that I haven't seen before. Um, and so it's wonderful to have you all here for our uh, Adventures today. Now, today, uh, if this is working, today I've been asked to speak about following my lead. Um, and so I'm going to talk to you kids, uh, and I'm also going to talk to our church. And, and what happens is when pastors preach, sometimes they can be a bit boring. Hey, you reckon? In fact, um, one time I was preaching a sermon, and uh, we didn't have any musicians. We had this one older man, and he was, he was um, the only musician we had. And Pastor T started preaching a sermon, and he was preaching a really good sermon. Or at least I thought it was a good sermon. Um, and I was preaching away, preaching away, and then it came time for the closing song. And I finished my sermon, and I looked down, and the man that was supposed to be playing our final song was fast asleep. Uh, and that was a bit awkward. But that's okay. We got there in the end. If you want to have a sleep, if Pastor T is a bit boring, then that's all right. But if you want to participate as well in the sermon, I want to do a little challenge for you. Adventures, and this is what you're going to do. You might need a pen and paper if you can. If not, that's okay. You can use your great memories because this is what we're going to do. I am going to say a few words. Actually, I'm going to say a lot of words during my sermon. And one of the words I'm going to say is the name Jesus. Can everyone say Jesus? And the other word I'm going to say Every now and then, the other name I'm going to say is the name Peter. Everyone say Peter. Peter. All our adults say Peter. Peter. All right. Now, this is what we're going to do. All right. When I preach, I want you to count how many times I say the name Jesus and how many times I say the name Peter. Now, it might be easier if you have a little piece of paper. You might want to keep score, something like that. Okay. Now... Um, Auntie Danielle is keeping a record of it. So after you're finished, you can go and ask Auntie Danielle how many times I said it. And I talk a lot, so the score might go quite high. Even though I've only got 20 minutes, so maybe it won't be that high. Okay. Uh, keep score of how many times I said the name. What's the name? And the name? Jesus and Peter. So I'm going to talk today about follow, or the, the title of my sermon today is called Follow My Lead. Now, before I start, would it be all right if I said a prayer together? All right, can we all, can we all say prayer together? Three, two, one. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for Sabbath. We thank you for our Adventures Club, this wonderful time. We can come together. We can listen to your word that speaks to us. Lord, I pray that um, as I speak, that the words that I speak, Lord, will be a blessing to our Adventurers Club, our parents, and our church, and our family, and all of our visitors. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say, Amen. Amen. One of the things I love about this idea of following my lead, every time I think of following my lead, I think about some of my favorite movies and books of all time. How many adventurers like to read books? Or a few, not yet, maybe you're a bit young to really get into reading books, but I used to love to read books, and one of my favorite books to read uh, as I got a little bit older was a science fiction book called Lord of the Rings, and I love Lord of the Rings because it told an adventure about a little, it's not a little boy, he's a little hobbit, right? but basically a little boy 
who goes running off after some wizard on a grand adventure where he's going to save the world. And every kind of fantasy book has the same idea. There's always some young person, some young child, and they always have to follow some great wizard or some great leader off on a great adventure. And as I think about those books, I always think about how this young person goes on these great journeys from this place to that place. And it gets me to thinking about church family. It gets me to thinking about who do we follow on a day-to-day basis. When I think about following my lead, I think about a particular story in Scripture, which we're going to read together, in which Jesus, don't forget to write it down, everyone, in which Jesus calls his disciples to follow his lead. And we're going to read together from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17 to 22. If you have a Bible uh, family, turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 4 as we read Matthew 4 verse 17 to 22. And this is what it says. Are you there, church family? Say amen. Amen. Give me a big smile. I think the first time I preached here, I asked you to smile when you've looked it up. Uh, Let's do that again because it's nice to have you smile at me this morning. Uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 17 to 22, and this is what it says. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you a fisher of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending nets. And he called them. Immediately, they left the boat, their father, and followed him. You know, when I think about the story of Jesus calling his disciples, it reminds me of the very first time I ever went fishing. Put your hands up, adventures, if you've ever been fishing before. Now, I'm going to tell you two stories about fishing today. But I want to tell you about the first time I went fishing. I was about... 13 years old and my dad decided we're going to go on a fishing trip and I wasn't very good at fishing Um, he never really taught me how to fish properly Um, but he just he loved to go fishing and every time he would go fishing he would always tell me Terence you have to stay behind because you're too you're too much work to take fishing did you believe that like how could he not take me of all people right And so this time he said, Terence, you're old enough now. I'm going to take you fishing. And he took me to a place in New Zealand where we got to go out on a big boat. And on the big boat, um, we got to go fishing for um, a particular fish called snapper. Everyone say, mmm. We're Adventists. We don't eat fish. Uh, But we were fishing for snapper. And um, I remember I I had my fishing rod there. And because I didn't really know what I was doing, he goes, here, just cast it. You just pull this thing over and throw the fishing rod. And I was like, just like this, Dad. And I was walking around, and I remember the hook was swinging around on the end of my fishing fishing rod. And somehow when I went to cast my fishing rod, the hook got stuck on the back of the captain's jersey. Um, And I remember, you know they say that sailors say a few choice words? Well, he said a few choice words to me that day. He was like, man, you are crazy. And I was like, oh, what do you mean? He goes, you know, you you need to learn how to fish, young man. And Jesus said that we need to be fishers of men. That's not what he meant. I'm going to tell you what he means in a minute. But it does. It reminds me of the time when Jesus went fishing. And so um, Jesus goes down to the Sea of Galilee, and he sees the disciples there about to get onto a 
boat. And I want to share with you a little bit about what that means today. Because when, the, when, when, when you were a fisherman in the time of Jesus, it usually meant that you were not a very, very bright person. Now, put your hands up, adventurers, if you think you are very, very good at learning and good at school. Yes? Put your hand up, parents, if you think that you are good at learning and good at school. A few hands up. Okay, you don't want to confess. That's all right. Right? But usually what would happen is young boys would, would be so excited to learn, especially young Jewish boys, that they would go to the schools, and if they were smart and if they were clever, they would become, they would become disciples of the various teachers, and they would grow. And if they weren't very good, if they weren't very smart, if they weren't very clever, they had to go find another job, and usually that job was a really difficult job like fishing. And so when Jesus comes down to the water and he's looking around and he sees the fishermen, he knows that these aren't men who are well educated. They're not very smart. They're not very clever. But that doesn't matter because Jesus is about to call these men to a higher purpose. And so he says to them, he he comes down to the water and he sees Peter and he sees um, Andrew standing there and he's like, I want you to come and follow me. And because they knew that Jesus was somebody super exciting, that he was the type of person they wanted to follow, a little bit like how Luke might follow after uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi if you're a Star Wars fan, or how Frodo follows after the wizard if you're a Hobbits fan, or how, how, how we might want to follow after people that are super clever and super intelligent The disciples are called to follow Jesus. And when they're called to to follow Jesus, it usually requires them to give up everything that they have ever done before. And I want to suggest this to you today and to our church family, that following Jesus is a lifelong commitment. I want you to turn to the person beside you today and say, it's a commitment. It's a commitment. And like any, like any commitment, it involves sacrifice. And like any commitment, it involves discipline. And it involves hard work. And it involves a decision to say, hey, no matter what's going to happen, I am not going to stop following. He says, follow me. Kind of reminds me of driving this morning on the freeway. Now, I don't know about you, but have you ever been on the freeway and a car is driving up behind you and you pull over, let them overtake because they're coming right up behind you? You know what I'm saying, church family? And when the car pulls, uh, comes right up behind you and they overtake you and then they come in front of you and then they slow right down, right? Does anyone here know what I'm saying this morning? That feeling of you let this person in the lead, and then they don't want to lead, right? Now, I don't know about you, but that often makes me smile. (laughs) God bless you, driver. I can't tell you my honest feelings about that. But, you know, it's one one of the most frustrating things ever, because you let this person in front of you, and then they don't want to lead, right? The reality is for us that when we decide we're going to follow Jesus, we get to a point where we're like, Jesus, I want you to be the leader in my life. I want to follow you, but I only want to follow you so far. And then sometimes we're like, ah, but if you take a little bit of a backseat, perhaps I am going to take the lead for this time being. Kind of reminds me of my dog. Adventurers, this is my dog. He's passed away now. I had him a long time ago. Um, that's me too, by the way, (laughs) when I had a little bit more hair. And I had a dog, and his name was Spartan. Everyone say Spartan. I don't know why I named him Spartan. I thought it was a cool name. And he was a very, very, very well-behaved dog. He was a great dog. He was so playful. And we were really worried because 
he was a SPCA dog, so we had rescued him from the SPCA. And we were worried because we got Spartan, and then six months later, we got our first daughter, Takani. And we were worried that Spartan might be kind of vicious or mean, and so we tried to train him, and he was actually the most harmless dog ever. He was a great dog, except for one thing that Spartan did, which we could never fix. And that was, we would often take Spartan for a walk, and we would put him on the lead, and I don't know what happened. But as soon as the collar went on and the lead went on, he was like a rocket ship. You know, you just take off. And we would try and teach him, no, Spartan, you need a heel. That means that he walks right by your side. Does anyone here have a dog? Right? Have you taught your dog to heel? Oh, man, my dog. I, it doesn't matter how much I teach him. Must have been a Samoan dog. Never got it. <laughs> right? So I tried to teach Spartan to heal, and no matter how much I tried to teach him to heal, he would just pull and pull and pull, and, and he's got quite a thick neck, so he pulled pretty hard, and we just could not teach him that, Spartan, you need to be right here by my side. You can't pull. We would try all the tricks with the little, the, the little treats where you get them to look up. It didn't matter. He was hopeless. It gets me to think in church family about how much we allow God to lead in our life. Are we willing to follow him each and every day? Are we willing to say, hey, God, I'm no longer going to be pulling at the reins, but wherever you decide to take me, that's the place where I am going. In the book of Luke Chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus says, And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Many of us call ourselves Christians, but when the pressure comes on, we put Jesus to the side and we say, Hey, we don't want to follow where you're leading. We want you to take a backward step. Let's, uh, let's keep going. There's another thing that Jesus says, and I want to share it with you this morning. Just out of curiosity, what am I up to? 15? 15. Okay, not, not bad. I said to my wife, I'm probably going to say Jesus like a hundred times. So I hope you're counting adventures. I hope you're counting. Jesus says, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. And it reminds me, uh, adventurers, of another one of my favorite TV shows called Transformers. Does anyone here like Transformers? Can anyone here make the noise of a Transformer? <laughs> anyway, I can't do it. My mouth is too dry. And in Transformers, it would be so cool because I used to have this truck and it would transform into a robot called Optimus Prime. And that was my favorite toy in the whole world. It would transform from a truck to a robot and I would sit there and I'd play with Optimus Prime. Nowadays, it's Bumblebee. But it gets me to thinking because Jesus says, if you follow me, I will make you into a fisher of man. And what that means is God will take us and he will transform us and he will turn us into a better version of ourselves. Would you say amen to that church family? Some of you may remember, and I remember one of my great memories of being here at Campbelltown last year, and it was when Brother Brett stood up. Is he here today? Somewhere? I can't see him. And I remember he would stand up and talk about how his life had changed. He had gone from a hard life to somebody that's walking with Jesus every day. And I think of my own life and, and how much it's changed coming into a saving relationship with Jesus. My life has gone from what it was to what it is now. And I think if you look at your own lives, the way that God has transformed us each and every day. I think of Peter, and Peter, as Jesus was there on, 
uh, the side of Galilee, he comes up to Peter and he says to Peter, go out in the water and I'm gonna, you're going to perform this miracle. And he f- brings up all this fish. And then Peter says something really spectacular. He says, Lord, I am sinful. Repent. Change me. And when Peter says those words, he, and, then, and, then God, and then Jesus takes him and says, come and follow me and I will make you into a fisher of man. And if the story ended there, then that would be okay because Peter, you know, he wasn't, not our Peter, by the way, right? Peter in scripture, he wasn't the most well-educated man, but as he spoke and as he learned and as he grow, grew, God changed him. And then in the book of Acts, we see the fruition of that. We see Peter standing up in front of a whole crowd of people and he starts preaching. And it was really fascinating because as he preaches, the people said, isn't that Peter who was unlearned, who was not very bright, who never went to school, who never qualified um, in the school of theology or anything like that? Isn't that Peter that was with Jesus? But how is it that now he's preaching with power and with authority and with passion? And the Bible tells us that that day 3,000 were brought to Jesus Christ. It gets me to thinking, church family, that when we decide that we are going to follow Jesus, he takes us and he makes us into something new and something better. Now, there are many of us, and adventurers, you're okay, but I'm going to talk to some of our adults today, who desire to walk with Jesus each and every day, but don't want to experience that transformation. You know, Jesus, I want to follow you, but I don't want to change and become a better version of myself. But Jesus says, follow me, and I will make you into a fisher of men, following Jesus transforms us. He says, come and follow me and I will make you into a fisher of men. When we follow Jesus, it gives us a mission and a purpose. I want you to say mission this morning. I want you to say purpose this morning. Got me thinking about a story. I, I always forget which stories I've told, so I apologize if I've told this before, but I'm going to tell it again because it's a transformative story in my life. And it's a story of my 25th birthday. Just before my 20th, 25th birthday, it was my dad's 40th birthday, okay? 40th birthday. Don't bother doing my, the math. It's my stepfather. He's only 15 years older than me. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Good man. And on his 40th birthday, dad decides he wants to go with the family fishing. And he's fishing and he's fishing and Um, The day was a great day. They caught absolutely no fish. He wasn't a very good fisherman, in my opinion. Uh, But they were having fun. They're at a place in New Zealand called Piha. And Piha is notorious, notorious for being a very dangerous beach, right? On one side of the beach, there's this long kind of normal beach with two rips that you can see as you're driving. You can just see them there, right? And surfers use those rips to get out and catch the good waves. But if you don't know how to swim and you don't know what a rip is, you get caught in the rip and get sucked out. If you climb over the a little bit over the other side of the beach, there's a a place called um, the Gap, and it's a place where fishermen love to go because you get really deep water. You catch a lot of kingfish and other things um, from there. And anyway, so Dad's fishing that day, and as he's fishing. He's catching nothing. The weather starts to change, and he decides, you know what? That's it. I've had enough. Just as he was about to leave, a freak wave comes up and washes him out. Dad's washed out. 
by now the weather's rough. It's cold. It's freezing. Um, I remember the story for two reasons. One, Danielle and I were driving out to go meet up with them. And two, it just so happened that that particular day they were filming an episode of Pihar Rescue. Uh, and my dad was the star of the show that day. So it's uh, forever captured on film. Anyway, dad's swimming, and after 20 minutes of swimming, he starts to lose energy, and he starts to drown. Now, it's fortunate that it was my dad, because dad's the best swimmer out of all of us, and probably the fittest, and we would have all been long gone if it was me or my brother or my uncle. But my uncle was there, my dad's younger brother, and and I remember um, my uncle was telling me that he tried first to put the rod in to pull him out, right? Puts the rod in, dad grabs hold of it, the rod breaks in half, dad continues to drown. And eventually, it got to a point where dad was, his eyes had glazed over, and he was starting to go down. And at that point, my uncle looks looks at my dad and says, there's, and then he uses a few of those choice words, just anything to inspire him. You get up, you open your eyes, you're drowning, you need to come up right now. Beep, beep, beep. Get up. You're drowning. There's. My dad kind of just kind of comes awake, just does his best. And at that very moment, a wave washes my dad up to a point where my uncle was just able to grab him by the collar of the um, by the collar of his jacket that he's wearing, and held onto him like that. Very unsafe because my uncle was also being was worried about getting washed in, and managed to hold him that way, bring him up onto shore. Dad by now was semi-conscious, drowning. Um, as he was doing that. My brother had run the two Ks back to the lifehouse, and they had just come around with a boat around the other side and saw Dad collapse there on the side. They grabbed Dad, put him in the boat, take him back, uh, and they I think they sent out a helicopter for him. They were worried that in the time when they had him back at the lifeguard, lifehouse, uh, for an hour or two afterwards, he was suffering from severe hypothermia, and he was they were worried that he was still drowning on the inside. Now, I thank God that dad didn't die that day. But when I think about that story and how, dad, how close dad came to passing away, I think about what Jesus said, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. When I look at that picture and I think for some of us, We might be the ones that are drowning, right? Drowning in our life of despair and our life of sin and drowning in the struggles and stress of the world, drowning with all of the things that we have to try and deal with. And then God rescues us. And then he says, follow me and it's going to be okay. And I will make you a fisher of men. And when I think of that story, I think God is now calling us. If we are following Jesus, he's given us a mission and a purpose to be a fisher of men, rescuing those who are lost. Would you say amen this morning? And sometimes when we think about our our mission and our purpose, we often forget that God has rescued us and he's called us and he's asking us to follow him wherever he goes so that we in turn can become fishers of men, living out his divine purpose for us. Now, church and adventurers, following Jesus isn't easy. Following his lead isn't always going to be an easy journey, but when we do, It's a transformative process. It changes us. It creates in us something new, something powerful. It gives us a sense of purpose, a sense of our calling to save others. When I think about that, I can't help but say, Jesus, I will follow you 
wherever you go. Is that your hope and your prayer today, church family? Do you desire to follow Jesus? Do you desire to walk with him each and every day and to become a fisher of men? In Jesus' name, amen. Wherever he goes, we will follow.
Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you have called us to a higher purpose, that you call us to follow you, and you will make us fishers of men. Lord, we have an opportunity as your followers to grow, to be transformed, and to be able to reach out and bring others into a saving relationship with you. And Lord, sometimes we fall short of that ideal and that expectation. But Lord, we just ask once again that you will lead in our life, that you will lead in our journey and that we will follow you. Lord, this morning I want to ask that you'll just bless especially our adventures this morning and the Adventure Club, Lena and the team. Lord, these young boys and girls as they grow, help them to follow you every day of their lives. Lord, I pray that you'll bless all of our congregation here at Campbelltown. We thank you, Lord, that, uh, that you are leading in our life, and we thank you for all that you've done. We pray for those that aren't with us today, um, and we remember them as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Adventurers, staff, please be upstanding. Congregation, can I ask you to please stand as the adventurers march out? Okay, we're singing. Ready?
grandparents, aunties, uncles, brothers and sisters. You've seen a short version of what we do at Adventures. The door's open. Come and join us. You've got nothing to do. Come and join us. We have classes this afternoon. Come and join us, please. We need as much on the team as we can possibly get.